Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am finally pregnant! <laughs> I have peed on all the sticks. I am finally pregnant after nearly two and a half years of trying to conceive. It feels damn good to hold all these sticks and say, I've made it. I did get my first dye steal today. So if you didn't know, this is the control line. This is the test line. I'll show you compared to my first one. Okay, so the top test is my very first test with a very faint line. And my bottom test, this one here, is the test today. So I am finally pregnant. I'm currently three weeks, six days. However, there's a few things that <laughs> I need to say. I have not had a blood test to confirm yet. I called my clinic last week when I got a positive and they said to come in on Monday. They're like, oh, it's a bit early. Your test date isn't until Monday. Come in on Monday. And then they're like, oh, it's a public holiday. Come in on Tuesday. So I'm going in tomorrow, which will be a week after I found out that I'm pregnant. So I've known for a week that I'm pregnant. Um, I don't even know, like, I feel like my mind's so jumbled. Not gonna lie, I literally just woke up from that. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So I don't really know what's gonna happen with the whole, like, doctor's visits and everything. There is so much I want to tell you and I don't even know where to start. Tomorrow I will have my blood test. Hopefully they call and confirm I'm gonna go there, like, straight away in the morning, get it done, because... Obviously, I want to know. It couldn't be a conspiracy in my head at this point, I am sure. I'm going to th go through today with symptoms that I've been having and overall how I've been feeling. I do want to talk about COVID and becoming pregnant in a worldwide pandemic. Crazy. And I don't know, I'll just go wherever my mind takes me. But I do want to start off by saying if this is the first video of mine that you're watching. Hi, I'm Crystal. My husband and I have been trying to conceive for, it was two years in December and it's April this month. So I don't even know how many months that is, I'm not gonna lie. And it's a hell of a long time. We've been through several GPs, two different fertility specialists, an acupuncturist, a naturopath. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. To fall pregnant this cycle, we used an ovulation induction method where you take letrozole, which is a follicle stimulant drug. And I took them from days three to seven of my cycle. I'm really sorry, I'm out of breath so bad. It's a symptom of increased progesterone. I looked it up, it's a real thing. <laughs> and then you're meant to have a scan, a transvaginal ultra scan at day 12 of your cycle to see the progression of your follicles and make sure that they are mature enough. And if they are, then you have a trigger shot, which is HCG. I believe mine was pregnal trigger shot. It's basically HCG, which then tricks your body to ovulating, but it triggers your LH levels into ovulating. And then the eggs are released. And um, from then on, I take progesterone pessaries three times a day. Okay, so these are the progesterone pessaries. They're kind of like one of those little Nurofen capsules. They're basically progesterone cream and you insert them vaginally and you do that three times a day. So <laughs> that's really cool, not, <laughs> but if it helps me get pregnant, doesn't really matter. Also, I do want to mention that these are pretty expensive for about two weeks. I think it's about $90 and I need to take them until I'm at least 10 weeks pregnant. And then the process is you take them until you are 14 days past ovulation. The clinic gives you a date and everything to test on because I've been doing this so long. I tested from, sometimes it would be eight days past ovulation, but usually nine like definitely nine, definitely 10. But the date that they give you, I think it is 14 days past ovulation. So I think it's the day that your period is meant to come, you're meant to test, which is what most tests say. And that's the way you're definitely gonna get a line. <laughs> and then you call and either tell them that you're pregnant or you tell them that you're, you've got your period and then they book you in for the next cycle because they need to book in your scan. So we have been doing them. This was our fourth ovulation induction cycle. Oh, I forgot to mention once you've been triggered, then you need to have intercourse for the next three days. So that day and the following, I think it, I think it's that day and then the following two days. But with my previous specialist, they actually just gave me the letrozole and did the scan. And my problem was that I was ovulating too late. So usually in a typical, well, of textbook style is you ovulate day 14. 
and I wasn't ovulating until it was usually day 18 to 26. So I know one day I went in with the previous specialist and I had a scan and I think that I was day 20 or 21 and he did a follicle scan and my follicles, there were two of them and they were four centimeters or 40 millimeters each. Like that's too big, like they're overcooked. He didn't say that, <laughs> but it's not the correct size that they usually trigger on. He didn't give me a trigger shot. He never gave me a trigger shot. It was not offered. He mentioned it at one point, a trigger shot, didn't give it to me. And I also mentioned to him that my periods were coming too early, to which I asked if there was anything that could be done about that. Nothing could be done. With this specialist, I came in with months worth of data with charting, with BBT charting. Um, I use Fertility Friend, highly recommend it. Looks a little bit old school, but it's plain and simple, it's great. And so much data to prove that I have luteal phase defect. My periods, I got them through the help of the naturopath and the acupuncturist and time and, you know, taking certain supplements, I actually increased my luteal phase. It was at the start, like literally I'd be bleeding from ovulation to like four days and then I got it up to about eight to ten days but usually spotting a few days before that but still ten days isn't really ideal if you want to get pregnant like my period's already like on its way basically so I went in armed with all of that information saying that I ovulate late and I get my period too soon and he's like great I'll see you in nine months. And that didn't happen. <laughs> a little bit longer than that, but anyway. <laughs> but the method that he was gonna choose for us, which was the ovulation induction cycles, which is what we've done. Um, but sometimes some of us do need medical assistance and I do need my ovulation to be brought up and I do need progesterone to help me support my luteal phase. That is how I got pregnant. Um, the next thing that I wanna talk about is you're probably all here for symptoms. I've known that I've been pregnant for a week now. It's so funny, like I'll do a whole video on like the two weight symptoms, but the most obvious symptom that I've had is I am so bitchy. I have such a short temper, like I will snap at anything. Dean was working outside and he asked me to get scissors and I was, I got up, went to the drawer where the scissors are, pulled out the drawer and I'm like, why the F aren't they in here? They're always in here. Like I lost it and I pulled out the drawer next to it and they were in there. And I don't put them in that drawer. Someone else put them in that drawer. I lost it. <laughs> like just little things like that. Like I just, I can't, I can't even control it. It's like a dragon breathing fire. Like you just don't even realize that it's happening until it's happened. Does that make sense? I did have really bad insomnia. The last two nights, it actually hasn't been too bad, but in my luteal phase, I do usually get insomnia. So I find it a bit hard to go to sleep. And then I wake up at about 3 a.m., can't get back to sleep until like six and then Dean's alarm goes off and then he's up getting ready for work, which keeps me up. And then by the time it's like seven o'clock, I usually go back to sleep for another hour or sometimes I just get up which leaves me cranky and tired during the day anyway. That's cleared up a bit. My memory card just ran out. Wow, I like literally can't even talk to it. Uh, yeah, so shortness of breath and I, I have had cramping, although it has eased. I'm hungry, like not even like hungry, like famished. I just want a snack. Like I just want to eat all day, like. <laughs> and saliva, I've had a bit of saliva. Like the other day I was talking to Penny and it just like spat out and I'm like, that is disgusting. Oh, and I've been going to bed a lot earlier than normal. Like I've been falling asleep on the couch at like 8, 9 p.m. I have been having like sometimes like 15 minute naps, but sometimes I need that with my insomnia. Um, but today I literally, I think I had like an hour nap. So that doesn't usually happen. So I have been feeling a bit tired. <sighs> this out of breath thing. Oh, and my nipples and boobs. Tingly nipples like all the time and heavy, sore, like, yeah, heavy breasts. Yeah, and you can see like I'm like, I've got like it just a, you can see it like popping out there. Like they're bigger than normal. 
I will say that I am the heaviest I have ever been. Um, I did recently through my specialist found out that I do have PCOS. I know there are quite a few of you that asked if I had it and I always said no because I had never been told that I had it. I'd had multiple blood tests, seen different GPs, specialists, everything, never been told that I had it, been told the opposite kind of thing because finally got told that I had it and it makes all the symptoms add up and it explains why I have put on so much weight since being off the pill. So that's not fun. It's really easy to put on weight and it is hard to lose it. This video is really long. So I'm going to do a, a separate video about my COVID, being pregnant during COVID, I think. Um, but I do want to do these like weekly and I, you know, I don't see that many people doing them this early. Usually people don't even find out that they're pregnant until like now, but because I've been trying so long and watching so much information, researching so much and you know, I knew that you can't you can't get symptoms until at least six days past ovulation, and you shouldn't really get a positive test until nine or ten days past ovulation. Um, obviously, some people don't get them till 11, 12, 13, 14 days past ovulation, the positive test. I was lucky. If you haven't seen my video of me finding out that I'm pregnant, I haven't even edited the footage, but I feel like I was about to have a panic attack because <laughs> I was just so excited and Dean was due home soon. Oh, before I was watching the bold type and there was a scene where Sutton kind of teared up and I just started bawling my eyes out for like literally no reason like I could cry right now if I wanted to and that hasn't happened before I've been like fire breathing dragon but I hadn't been a crier yet so I have signed up to Ovia Pregnancy and today it does say my baby development is baby's yolk sac which feeds her until the placenta forms is now developing. I wonder why it says which feeds her. By the way, forgot to mention that at my follicle scan it was cycle day 11. You're meant to have the scan on day 12 but it was a Saturday. So I had it on the Friday the, the day 11. There were two follicles. So there is a chance that I have more than one baby and I don't know when we're going to have our first scan or find out how many we're having, one or two, I don't know. We had to sign like a form saying that yes, there's two follicles there and you know, we know the risks and everything associated with that. But we're just like, oh, we've signed this form other times before. It's never gonna happen and here we are but that'll be interesting to find that out but overall like I have this week I haven't been able to focus on anything else I'm just so flipping excited that I'm finally pregnant and it's been like I'm gonna get emotional right now it's been so long that I've held off like looking up any baby stuff or watching any videos and I've just love to being able to watch them all, being able to watch videos on baby products and you know look up nursery websites and furniture and you know like I've literally waited so long to do this and I've just been consumed by it this past week. I really haven't been able to focus on anything else. Like I might have the TV going but I'm on my phone like my phone dies like <laughs> Like I have to recharge it because I'm just like on it reading and watching videos and like that makes me so happy that I'm finally able to do it and I've waited so long to be able to do this and I'm just <sighs> we also haven't told anyone we're gonna wait until we have our first scan also because of COVID I might not be able to tell my parents in person. They live in South Australia and right now the borders are closed. But um, we have figured out the way that we want to tell our parents. We want to make a, a wine bottle label that says Baby Conti to December 2020. We also want to wait until after the scan to see how many we have because we'd write Conti twins or something like that on the bottle. But yeah, just over the moon so excited I know there will be quite a few of you that will wonder what happened to my TTC series I did have like a bit of footage after I stopped um, putting them out 
but I for my mental health like I just couldn't put them out and like and then I stopped filming in the end I don't have like all the footage from what's happened anyway but um I just want to say I know what you're going through I've been there I've lived it and I am so grateful and I'm so lucky to be where I am now like you have no idea you have no idea how happy I am to be able to sit here and make this video <laughs> anyway <laughs> I'm just a mess thank you guys for all of your support <laughs> Um, and I'm so happy that I finally get to make this video, like, honestly. And I know so many of you guys will be happy for me as well, but just know if you are trying to conceive, I honestly, like, my heart goes out to you. I am praying for you and, and just hang in there. Just, like, I never gave, there were some times where I gave up hope, like it was last year sometime, or I'm just like, I'll just let it happen. And then my cycle got worse and then I went back to the specialist and then it just took a few months. So things might break you, things might get you down, but don't give up hope and do the best you can do to try and make your dreams come true. That's, that's all I can say. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> okay, thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye.